Christ's holy resurrection. For behold, through the cross joy hath come to the whole world, forever blessing the Lord. We praise His resurrection. He endured the cross for us, and by death destroyed him. Risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tomb, Christos rejoice in the Lord in this beautiful day that God has bestowed upon us and also for Holy Pascha at which he withheld the rain so that we could have our traditional procession. Today we're gathered also in an upper room. Although the doors are not sealed and not closed and yet our Lord Jesus Christ has also appeared in our midst this day and together with us spiritually offers us the peace that passes all understanding, the peace of grace, and the promise of the Holy Spirit. For though on Pentecost we celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit, yet we know that now today, here in this time, in this place, the Holy Spirit is also in our midst and illumines our hearts and our souls and our minds. Today we remember Thomas, and too often Thomas is remembered <coughs> mostly because he had doubts. But we cannot say that his doubts were completely unhealthy. For Thomas desired above all to know for certain those things which were proclaimed and those things which were given voice. He loved our Lord Jesus Christ and he wanted no one else except our Lord Jesus Christ, to assure himself that this was before him, that same Lord Jesus whom he had seen lifted up on the cross and buried in the tomb. That same Thomas, with the faith that he had to become the first one to proclaim my Lord and my God, carried the faith the farthest, a, more, a greater distance than all the apostles across the whole of the Middle East and into India and left behind a trail of what would become parishes, congregations of those who worship the true and the living God, congregations of those who professed the risen Christ. It's for us also, brothers and sisters, to pay attention because we hear many people preaching in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and yet paying very little attention to Jesus Christ himself and to what he commanded and to what he taught. We need to read the Gospels carefully and see the teachings of Jesus Christ as if, like Thomas, reaching out to touch the nail print in his hands and the wound in his side. Or what people are teaching us, or what people are proclaiming and preaching are they really consistent with the words and the actions and the deeds of Jesus Christ himself? For if someone tells us that Apostle Paul tells us we're not saved by works of the law, but the Lord Jesus Christ tells us 
I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was sick and you didn't visit me. I was in prison and you did not come to me. <clears throat> when, Lord, did we see you in these conditions and not minister to you? As much as you did not do it to the least of these my brethren, you did not do it for me. Depart from me, I never knew you. <coughs> so what good is it to have to profess a faith, to outwardly confess a faith, to say, yes, I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, I've been born again, and all these things, and nevertheless come before the face of the living God and have him say, depart from me, I never knew you. So often we profess with the lips, but our hearts and our deeds are far from our Lord Jesus Christ. So many people in this world today preach in the name of Jesus Christ, but they do not preach Jesus Christ. They do not preach the Lord who revealed himself to us through the Gospels. They preach something else and someone else. But they do not <coughs> preach the Lord Jesus Christ, whose life we're supposed to imitate. We were called upon to have a life in Christ, not simply a life of some kind of piety, of some kind of emotionalism, of some kind of waving our arms in the air and singing feel good about me songs. Apostle Thomas did not want to worship or pay reverence to anyone except that Lord Jesus Christ who preached his gospel, who demonstrated his compassionate love for mankind, who was so full of forgiveness and who conquered the power of death and gave us the possibility of everlasting life, who shared with us already in this world a small taste of the kingdom which is to come by healing, by comforting, by giving consolation, by bestowing upon man a kind of co-suffering love that could serve to transform their souls and to transform their persons. He did not come preaching all kinds of legalism. He did not come preaching punishment. He did not come to mete out some kind of juridical justice but to heal and to lift up and to exalt the fallen and the lowly and to demonstrate that the glory of God is his compassionate love. To show us that God himself is meek and humble and lowly of heart and that those who would be his followers must also be the same. Brothers and sisters like Thomas, let us reach out our hand into the gospel itself and look at the life and the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let us weigh and measure every teaching, every doctrine, every proclamation, every preacher, every teacher by whether or not they're revealing to us an image of that same Lord Jesus Christ and by whether or not we see something even vaguely in their lives, which demonstrates at least an attempt to live a life in Christ and not to bring people back in bondage again to law, but to lift us up in the power of the grace and the healing and the consolation of the Holy Spirit, which He has promised, which He has bestowed upon us which is in our presence here today, and yet which we will celebrate with great joy on the Feast of Pentecost. When we cry out that Christ is risen, that same Jesus Christ who walked upon the face of the earth, who had nowhere to lay his head, who embraced the weak and the fallen, who refused to judge the woman taken in adultery, but rather healed her soul, who refused to stand aside for the Samaritan woman and not speak to her, but made her an apostle indeed. 
who saw that the Canaanite woman had a faith motivated by a pure love for her child, and through her faith healed that child. Brothers and sisters, this is the Jesus Christ that we're called upon to imitate in our lives. And beware of those who preach another Christ, a malicious Christ, a Christ full of judgment, a Christ full of condemnation, a Christ filled with a rage to punish. That is not the Jesus Christ of the Gospel. It is not the Christ who was crucified, buried, and rose again from the dead and ascended gloriously into the heavens. Let us, like Thomas, be careful and reach forth our hand into the Gospels so that we can feel the nail print and the wound in the side and realize the incredible co-suffering, unselfish love of Jesus Christ. And if we would be his followers, let us strive to imitate that. Amen.